Hi, we'd like to welcome you to the first in a series of webinars designed for ports. Um, I'm Cherry Bills. I'm the Transportation Industry Manager here at ESRI, and today I'm joined by Matt Gibson, who's an account executive on our port sales team, and Jordan Bush, who's a, a sales engineer, uh, again, on our uh, ports uh, sales team. So um, we'd like to introduce this series. As I mentioned, it is uh, this is the first and what will become a series of webinars uh, really designed to highlight how GIS can be used uh, really to help ports succeed um, and how the GIS can play a role in terms of that digital transformation in ports. Um, I think we, rec we all recognize that ports play an increasingly important role in supply chains um, and in their regional economies. Um, and we'd like to highlight uh, that role, that critically important role that, that ports play. Uh, so today's uh, webinar is really focused on bathymetric data for better analysis and planning and really one part of your digital information infrastructure. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to point out that we are recording this webinar and everyone will be on mute. Uh, however, we will allow time for question and answers. You can type your question into the question box and we'll get to as many of the questions as time allows at the end of the webinar. Um, and uh, so, to start off, uh, let me uh, start off with a quote literally from uh, Information Age, really highlighting the fact that uh, not just in ports, but really digital transformation is taking place across just about every organization. And certainly uh, ports are uh, very much uh, involved in that same process. So whether it's uh, very, very large ports that we work with, here is the port of Rotterdam, uh, down to fairly small ports that are really looking at how they can use technology and digital information really to um, highlight their competitiveness and to create a uh, market uh, niche. So to begin, we'd like to uh, sort of suggest that uh, bathymetric uh, data is really one critical element in your digital information strategy. Uh, that as uh, ports really need to understand all of their assets, uh, those above and those below the water. And so the bathymetric data allows you to uh, seamlessly manage both uh, the above water and below water side of, of your assets and of your ports. Um, and as a result, we here at Esri are really spending an increasing amount of, of time looking at uh, how we can uh, better support 3D and better support bathymetric data. And again, how we can create that seamless platform for above and below water. Uh, as all of you, I'm sure, are familiar with the uh, trend towards larger and larger vessel sizes, um, the managing your underwater assets uh, really becomes even more important. And uh, certainly the ability to manage your channels and your berths to their proper depth uh, is not only important uh, literally from a port's competitiveness and but ultimately uh, contract compliance uh, point of view. And managing uh, those channel and birth deaths, birth depths uh, is uh, often a shared responsibility shared between uh, the Army Corps of Engineers and the ports and, and other agencies. That said, um, the ArcGIS platform gives you a way of sharing that information between all of those agencies in a way that each can engage and see the same information, work from the same information, really ultimately for better planning and better capital improvement planning. So, um, and um, unfortunately, the latest statistics show that 
uh, of the 59 busiest U.S. seaports, um, uh, very few, only about 35% of them are dredged to their necessary channel depths, uh, and far fewer are even dredged to their authorized widths. Um, and uh, so what we'd like to suggest is really understanding this vital part of your infrastructure can ultimately help you improve your competitiveness and further your port's digital information strategy for success. So what I'd like to do is turn it over to Matt Gibson, who's going to review the bathymetric uh, uh, solution that they have. And, and uh, uh, so let me turn it over to Matt and take it away, Matt. Thank you, Terry. My name is Matt Gibson. I'm the Port Specialist on Esri's transportation team, and it's great to be um, meeting with you today. What I'd like to do is take the broad subject of channel development and really focus on three topics of bathymetric data. And at the end of the day, I want you to realize that with the technology we're talking about, you'll be able to actually utilize the data that you've already collected, be able to perform analysis on that data, and then manage and share it because we know that you spend a lot of money and time goes into collecting the data and we really want to take advantage of the data in every way possible for channel development so let me set the stage for a minute on and discuss the main focus of what i'm talking about so if you look at this map on the bottom left Corner, you're going to see the gradient section, the shaded area. That is the channel. And in the U.S., the Corps of Engineers are responsible for managing that channel. They do the bathymetric scans, they do the dredging, and um, try to plan that with the port, of course. But the area we're talking about today is really from the edge of the channel to the shoreline. It's that area that falls to the port's responsibility. I guess. This can be a great asset and it can be a great liability. You may have heard in the news recently, there was a Supreme Court case that came out. The, the ruling came out a month and a half ago. And what they were trying to do is to determine what is the clause, the safe birth clause mean. They ultimately decided that the safe birth was the responsibility of the charter. And I think it could be interesting to see if the um, chartering companies start equipping ships with actual bathymetric scanning systems or if they try to transfer that liability to the port. Um, I guess we'll see. The other thing is our friends at NOAA did a uh, study recently at the port of the area of Long Beach in LA. And in that report, they created a uh, gave us a statistic that I thought was very interesting. For every extra foot of draft, an additional $2 million of product for tanker transit. And they're, of course, talking about the tankers, but something similar could be said of all types of uh, shipping. And knowing that a port's revenue is partially derived from the amount of cargo or people that are uh, transition from ship to shore, that can have a direct impact on the profitability of the port. It could be a very great asset. So that's setting the stage. And let's talk about the actual technology. And here are two different pictures. You see the map on the left is a traditional PDF, and it's got bathymetric data. And personally, I think it's beautiful. Uh, I love the color. I love the detail. You can tell a lot of information from this map, such as the depth in certain areas, uh, large areas. You can also see that it's off the coast of Alaska. And uh, you can see major areas that uh, of importance. What you cannot do with this bathymetric scan, or this PDF, is combine it with the scan that was done just after that. You can't really compare it to the scan the previous year and identify instantly the 
uh, rates of greatest change. You can't plot out your path and it provide a depth analysis uh, everywhere you're planning on taking your ship. Those are things that are done with analysis tools. And so if you look at the image on the right, this is a screenshot of uh, one of the dashboards that Jordan is going to show in a little bit. And it provides a lot of information. Um, I'll just highlight the pink area is an area that will calculate the amount of dredge material above the contracted depth in that terminal. And you can also see how much dredge material over each contract depth for the entire port, each terminal broken out. This type of analysis is possible when you have your bathymetric data into a powerful system like uh, Esri's ArcGIS. So one of the things, one of the challenges is how do you combine the different data sets? So uh, bathymetric data has been collected for years and years, and uh, sometimes it's collected every day or every month, et cetera. What we need to be able to do is to, to be able to combine the last scan with the current scan or the scan of the channel with the scan of the terminal areas. Because we also know that scanning uh, an entire channel or a terminal is kind of difficult to do all at once. So it's usually broken up into chunks and um, scanned in that manner. Well, with our technology, we can actually combine these two different scans and provide a single surface. This requires a little bit of magic, which is done behind the scenes, and um, combining contour lines and making sure that the most relevant newest data is on top, uh, presented. And that is one of the powerful things about our technology, the ability to do just that. When it comes to the utilization, our friends at the uh, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and our friends at NOAA both use this technology internally, and we're able to get their bathymetric files in our curated data so that you can easily combine it with your own data sets. Um, I think it's important to just mention the fact that we are following the HOS-102 standardization. So um, just know that we're constantly keeping up with the newest standards that are out there and we're prepared for the future. To talk a little bit about the analysis, um, we're going to be showing some um, different calculations based on the amount of material that is above the contracted depth. And if you call it contracted depth or design depth or uh, des desired depth, whatever you would like, advertised depth, uh, there are a lot of different terms, but it basically means this is how deep the port can be or should be or is. What we're looking for are those areas that stick up above that level um, because those could be the dangerous parts. Um, being able to calculate that, the entire terminal all at once is a very powerful thing, and then it, that can be used for the planning. We're going to show a very simplified process of predicting the bathymetry for the next year, the year after that. Um, and the reason for that, actually doing the prediction model, is to help you with your, your dredging planning. So when filling out the grant application, you can say, my current rate of change is X amount of feet per month, and I know that in nine months when this grant is awarded, I will need to remove a, this much material to get back into contractual depth. It's a very simple calculation that we'll show, but please note that our technology has the ability to use very complex and robust calculations. Whatever calculations you can come up with uh, to predict the rate of change in your port, we can use that formula uh, for the prediction models. One of my favorite things is being able to see the changes that happen over time. And I think it's 
important to note that with this technology, you're able to actually access your bathymetric scan. So I mentioned how we can combine the different surfaces, but simply accessing the files with a click of a mouse is very important as well. This is in contrast to having to go back into the file cabinet, find the PDFs of old, or to call up your contractor and ask for another data file. Uh, this is a very important thing so that you can easily change from 2012, 2013, 14, et cetera. You can actually access your bathymetric data. With that access uh, comes the ability to actually share the data that you have. Uh, uh, you may be familiar with Esri's platform and the, the fact that we can enable people to get to their data in three clicks or less from any device at any time. Handling your bathymetric data in a similar fashion is very powerful. So now if you need to provide your pilots with an updated uh, bathymetric scan, you can do so. And you can provide uh, your contractors a similar status. Uh, if you're working with the Corps of Engineers, you can uh, share the information with them in multiple ways. So actually sharing, getting to the data is easier and being able to share that is also very important. I think it's important to actually see this technology at work. And at this time, I'd like Jordan to provide us a demonstration with the uh, solutions that we've prepared. Thanks, Matt. So what we're going to take a look at are a few applications and workflows designed to help you fully utilize your bathymetric data analyze that data, and then use it to uh, make planning decisions. Uh, at the root of all of that is we want to be able to share this data with those in our organization who need it, whether they're engineers, planners, executives, or uh, if we need to share that out to the core or NOAA for any reason. So what we have here and what we're currently looking at is an overview of Long Beach Harbor. And we were able to get some bathymetric data uh, from them. And Matt and I put our heads together and went out and digitized some of these terminals. So what we're looking at here are the bathymetric scans of the terminals at Long, some of the terminals at Long Beach Harbor. And what we have are the standard bathymetric scale of dark blue means deep, light blue means shallow. And what I'd like to do is go ahead and take a look here at one terminal specifically, and that's terminal two. And what we can see here is that there's some shallowing or sedimentation occurring along the outside edges of that terminal. And as Matt indicated, we have a contractual depth obligation in this terminal. The depth obligation is 18 meters, meaning anything that's more shallow than 18 meters is outside of the contractual depth obligation. Yeah, hey Jordan, um, one thing I'd like to just let everybody know that we made up the 18 meter as their contractual depth. Uh, their depth may be deeper. So we just did that so that we can highlight um, the software's ability to identify the material above that depth. Uh, so don't believe that Long Beach is severely out of compliance. Uh, I'm unaware, but th these are kind of fictitious numbers just for the example. Thanks. Thank you, Jordan. Well, we have in this, oops, excuse me. So what we have here at the time of this photo was taken is a ship that's actually birthed in one of our harbors. And what we're looking at is an area on the outside here. And as we zoom closer in, we'll get a view of areas that are out of depth compliance. Areas in red or orange are further out of compliance than areas in yellow. So you, your eyes will tell the story here right away of which areas are out of compliance. For the sake of the refresh, I turned the background bathymetry off for this. So if you're wondering where it went, I just did it for that. And as we click on various sections of the map, we can see which sections are out of compliance. So this section happens to be 11 meters out of compliance, nine meters out of compliance, 16 meters out, or excuse me, that's the bathymetry. Out of compliance by five meters in this area. 
seven meters in this area. So we can see that there's quite a bit of places where they're out of depth compliance. So using our interactive selection tool, I'm going to circle the area where this ship is birthed to see how much material needs to be removed. And using this interactive selection, I can just go ahead and grab the approximate location we know our ship is going to birth in the future. I'll just go ahead and zoom out just a little bit and open our dashboard up. So what we're seeing now is the area that I've circled here highlighted in pink is 10,019 cubic meters of material which needs to be removed to meet contractual depth obligation. I'm going to go ahead and clear with the selection and you'll see that indicator number change. As that number refreshes, I'll draw your eyes to the book chart in the bottom left. This is the total material which needs to be removed out of every terminal. So terminal two, for example, the one that we're looking at, you've got 91,397 cubic meters of material that need to be removed. The indicator, after I cleared the selection, reset itself on only the map extent that we're looking at. So in just the map extent here, this is just a little bit over 25,000 cubic meters of material to remove. And what we did to calculate that was we did some plenty of work behind the scenes on the desktop side. This doesn't just come out of the box as intelligent like this. Plugging it into the dashboard was the easy part. This is some of how, the, how we got there. What we're looking at now is RTIS Pro and a model that I've, that I've built using configurable tools from our toolboxes. There's no custom coding or any custom scripts that went into making this model. What we're looking at is an overview of Baltimore Harbor. The only pre-processing that I've done is combine these two the bathymetric attributed grid files, .bag files, into one for the sake of our demo. The process works the same on separate files. As I run this model, I'll explain more about what it does. What this model does, as you can see highlighting in red, is it takes the native file format that we got from our depth, or excuse me, from our bathymetric contractors puts it in our desktop, creates a surface, smooths that, that surface using the bathymetry tools in ArcGIS, and then generates two things. It generates navigably safe and cartographically accurate contours, and also our surface models. It also then, the model itself is then programmed to change the symbology of the bathymetry from black and white to industry standard light blue to dark blue. That information can then be shared further with people in your organization that you see fit to gain access to it. And we do that through the web again. Here's that same data and the same contours that you're seeing shared in a web application. It went from the desktop and I was able to publish it to the web. I did this outside of the demo just in case my internet connection would have hiccup. But that's all we've done, was we've shared the information with those who need it after preparing it and analyzing it. For the next portion, I'm going to turn the contours off and zoom in a little bit. Here's that same overview of the Baltimore Harbor, and we're comparing two bathymetric surveys, one from 2012 and one from 2018. You may have more surveys or run more often, and we can do that. But for the sake of this demo, these are the two that I had ended up with. As Matt stated earlier, no matter how much, no matter the file type that you're getting, we can process that. And no matter how often, we can build models like this to make it intuitive or even run after hours to do the processing for you. That, however, would require a little bit of scripting. But what we're seeing here is an overview of Baltimore Harbor again. And I want to take a look at one place in particular. That's the Fells Point Terminal. And we can see some slight variation between the two surveys, some polygon here that you can kind of see, and then this starburst area that stands out. So here's our scan in 2012, and here's our scan in 2018. And you can kind of see that it's getting a little bit lighter in color here. I'll do that one more time for you. And you can just see the subtle variations, but there's a better way. Using 
our built-in widgets, we can go ahead and see that and just swipe that change off. Pre-processing allows it, your eyes again to tell that story. So on the desktop, I created a layer that took the difference of these two bathymetric scans. And we'll be able to see that here in clear detail, which areas have changed the most. As I swipe across, your eyes tell you that story. We can see this area in red is highlighted because it's got the greatest rate of change. And we can click on it and find yeah, out just how just it has add changed. For a... Hey, Jordan, if I could just add, if we think back to the Supreme Court case, um, that case really hinged around uh, an anchor being left in the middle of the channel. If so often we know that the, we just know the depth. And what I like about this is it really highlights the change. And so um, I, I've read stories of uh, containers falling off the ship and it being in the terminal. Uh, this Supreme Court case is an anchor being left in the channel. Those things would jump out because of a sudden change in the depth. It, it could be something else such as um, new sedimentation. But I think it's interesting because we just know what the channel is because of experience and familiarity. But this really highlights areas that could have changed dramatically. And I think that's really a powerful thing. Great point, Matt. So I'm going to turn the scans back on here. And to Matt's point, it, what we did here was past analysis. We simply took the depth of the newest survey and deducted that from the older survey and saw what areas changed. We're not using any complex hydrology or sedimentation models, but should you have those models, we can plug that into our software and use those calculations, which will give you a more accurate picture of your port, because we all know that sedimentation and hydrology depends greatly on where you are. And that was a look into the past, but how do we look into the future? Well, we can do the exact opposite process that we did on the desktop to find the change over time to predict the future. This, based on current sedimentation rates, is a picture of what the Fells Point Terminal will look like in 2024, going from a depth of about eight and a half meters in 2012 to a depth of now only 5.19 meters in 2024, greatly highlighting that potential sedimentation event that's happening for whatever reason in this highlighted location. The applications I've shown you today are designed to help you analyze, fully utilize, and share your bathymetric data with those who need it, whether they're inside or outside your organization. It's also designed to help you answer planning questions, like can this ship safely navigate into our terminal? Which areas might be outside of our depth obligations? How much material do we need to remove? And where can we put it? And also, how do we plan for dredging and potential expansion? With that, I'll go ahead and kick it back to Matt. Thank you. Yeah, Jordan, uh, if we could, if you noticed on the left side, there were different uh, layers and he highlighted 2012 and 2018 bathymetric scans and what I like to just highlight is the fact that um, that having access to the um, previous scans and the uh, existing bathymetric scans is very powerful being able to see those different years and you can do this of course by year by month etc then I think one other thing that we should mention when managing this data, we are not creating multiple copies. Um, we know this data is usually quite large. So what we're doing is creating a reference point and enabling the software to do this uh, combining of files and, and images to create the single surface without corrupting or manipulating the original file. So this will drastically help with getting access, also managing it because we're not duplicating the same file over and over. And you can edit it without fear of destroying the original. Those are powerful things when it comes to the 
management of your data. So to just summarize things, and, and before I hand it back over to Terry, what we've talked about today is really being able to utilize the data, being able to do the analysis and take advantage of the investments that you have already made and continue to make in your bathymetric data. This is critical for channel development, and um, we hope that through this discussion, you've learned how to get more utilization out of it, be able to see examples of how to do the analysis, and then, of course, managing it and sharing that data with the interested parties. Terry, uh, I appreciate it, and thank you very much. Okay, great. Thanks, uh, Matt and, and Jordan. Um, we'll now open it up uh, for questions, and we'll, uh, if you'd like to type your questions into the question box, and we'll answer as many as we can. All right. So <clears throat> the first question is, um, and maybe Jordan, this is for you. Can you reiterate uh, how you're looking at doing prediction analysis? <clears throat> sure. Yeah, we are doing prediction analysis using some simple raster tools in ArcGIS Pro. This is done by just subtracting our most recent uh, raster scan from the old one. There's no sophistication done or no sophisticated modeling done. So this is literally just out of the box. Let's take one raster, take the difference, and then that, calculate the depth from there. All right, and um, there's a question about sort of the licensing that, that is required uh, for the things that you were showing today. Can you speak to the different components of? Uh, Absolutely. So what we started with was operations dashboard, for, or which is now, I believe, rated RTS dashboards. Uh, that's included with the enterprise suite as one of the built-in applications. In ArcGIS Pro, uh, I'm using an advanced license, and to use and rebuild the model that I use, you will need 3D analyst, spatial analyst, and maritime for bathymetry desktop. This, that, those tools combined will allow you the necessary uh, processing and analysis to do what I was able to do and recreate that model that I was able to build. Okay, um, and back to the uh, the particular uh, berth at, at the Port of Long Beach. Uh, the question is, um, you drew a freeform polygon uh, to identify the dredging in that particular area. Um, is it possible to define a specific uh, polygon ahead of time uh, that you would actually then just uh, use to overlay uh, to calculate uh, dredge uh, dredge uh, material. You bet. You bet. Yeah, that's all stuff that we can do on the desktop. And then as we get our desktop sort of modeling process workflow down, we publish that online and then just kind of rework it as we need it. But that's completely possible. Um, I built everything and trimmed it out for the sake of our demo. Okay. And uh, so there's a question. Uh, uh, having to do with uh, sort of the way that uh, you worked with the Port of uh, Long Beach uh, to develop this demo. Uh, again, could you maybe just speak a little bit about that? And obviously, uh, they were very generous to share their uh, bathymetric data with us. Uh, can you maybe talk about that a little bit? Sure. Um, some of this bathymetry comes right from uh, the Living Atlas content. Um, we chose Long Beach because of some of the data that I was able to find out on the web, which was available through NOAA, and I want to say the NCEI. Um, don't quote me on that. I'd have to go back and check, double check. But um, we a, a lot. Some of this stuff was I, I inherited, uh, to be completely honest, when I took over the job. Some of this data, um, so I don't know exactly where we got it from, um, but some of this. Stuff came from the Living Atlas as well. Uh, specific to Baltimore Harbor, I know that I downloaded that one from, I think it was the NCEI. Okay. Uh, there's another one, uh, and 
basically maybe it gets a little bit more uh, technical and I'm going to answer it. Uh, it says, can you recommend a workflow to analyze the quality of the bathymetric data before using it for these volumetric analyses? And um, I do want to point out, we do have a, a sort of a, a fairly deep team of uh, maritime and bathymetric experts. Mm -hmm. And um, I would recommend that, you know, we kind of uh, refer that question. We'll, we'll have uh, one of them really sort of go into kind of the the, the deep uh, science of bathymetric uh, data and data quality. Yeah. And with any bathymetric scan that, that I've gotten, um, it comes with the confidence interval as well. So that is usually baked in on that .bag file uh, when it's received. But yeah, for more of the in-depth information, I would highly recommend we set something up with that product. Yeah. Um, so another question, uh, how could ports and other agencies uh, really get started and uh, leverage the technology that you're showing today? Yes, this uh, just contact us. We will be happy to take a look at what you're trying to achieve, um, see the types of bathymetric files that you have, and uh, discuss that ways that we can accomplish this. All right, so uh, I do have uh, the, uh, a few uh, links for additional resources, uh, certainly to the uh, uh, ArcGIS for Maritime uh, product that uh, you can explore a little bit more. Both uh, Matt and Jordan's emails are there. Uh, and uh, um, so I would, as well as feel free to reach out to Matt and Jordan at any time. Uh, and. Uh, um so and let's see another question here um uh, let's see here um i guess again back to the prediction analysis um and again maybe if you could just describe is it a linear extrapolation or uh, what is uh, how was the uh, prediction calculated yes this analysis was linear um, however note that we are working with a outstanding port in the US that we're working to develop the very complex and nonlinear um, type of analysis which factors in things such as hurricanes or floods, et cetera. So it, the example Jordan showed um, is straight linear. Uh, change rate over the last four years, predict the next four years. The capabilities of the software are much more robust than that. Right. All right, well, uh, so I think we've, uh, um, run out of questions. Uh, we do want to thank all of you uh, for joining today. Uh, as we mentioned, we will re-record uh, some of the uh, um, some of the parts that uh, where the sound was a little bit uh, garbled. Um, we do hope that you'll join us in the future uh, can, uh, for future webinars, uh, again, targeted at ports and maritime organizations. So on behalf of uh, Matt and Jordan and I, uh, we'd like to thank you uh, for joining today. And uh, thanks again. All right, bye-bye.